Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Sanjana. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how I'm planning to use the Happy Wagon Planner by Tatiana. So this particular planner, if you didn't know already, it comes in four different designs. Two are in hardbound, two are in wider bound. I personally like hardbound a lot, so I picked this one and I also loved uh, this particular design, which is the blush blossoms among all the four designs that were there. Um, anyways, I love this planner. I've actually used Tatiana's planner uh, this year as well in 2022 and they've been working out quite well for me. What I noticed was it is quite an essential planner and what I mean by that is uh, there are, it's not too minimal where you feel like oh, yeah, I wish that spread would have been there or this spread would have been there and it's not too uh, elaborate where it's a struggle for you to fill all the pages. So it's, it's, it's a good balance. That's the reason I really like it. And I was using it for my work um, in 2022 and this in 23 as well. I'm gonna continue uh, with this planner as my work planner itself. But one addition that I wanna make is that I have started taking up freelancing projects on the side. So I don't want this to be specific to my main job that I'm working at. I want it to be anything that brings me income when I'm working with someone else. So I want to use it at that. You know, for the most part, it is going to be my main job planner, but uh, I really like the project planning aspect, which I'll show you in a minute. I think that'll be perfect for uh, the other freelancing projects that I'm working on. All right, first we have here the dream board. You do have a double page spread, but I think I'm gonna uh, just use this particular one as dream board. And I'm not gonna lie, uh, I like the word dream board than vision board. I think this sounds way more whimsical and magical. It feels a lot better. So um, I think I'm uh, I'm really loving that they've titled it as a dream board. So. But you know, the activity would be quite similar. I would be adding things that um, I, want, I want to achieve or I want to manifest in 2023. But with regards to, let's call it actually the career planner instead of the work planner, with regards to my career outside my job, just in general, what are the things that I want to uh, manifest for myself in 2023? I'm going to use it for that. This one. Uh, for now, I think I will leave it blank. I like to leave certain pages blank so that in between the year, if I get certain ideas or if I think that, okay, I need this particular spread, I would already have the space to create it. I don't like to fill everything up at the beginning of the year itself. So this one, I am going to leave it blank. And then we move towards the goal setting pages so first you have an option to set your intentions i would have loved it if this was plain because it would have allowed me to add stickers and create a decorative spread that's not a problem we have lines uh, either what you can do is directly journal in here about your intentions um you know what just set a five minute or like 15 minute timer and really think about what you want to do, not what you want to achieve in your life. Like, what are your intentions? What do you intend to do with regards to your career? Or if you're using it for studies, you can uh, talk about your academic life. Or if you're using it as your main planner, think about just in oh, you know, in your life in its entirety. Like, what are you planning to do in 2023? You can do that. Or another thing you can do is journal in a separate notebook, like a plain notebook or something. And then uh, once you've journaled, let's say for about 15 minutes, you can go back and check like what are your intentions. Sometimes it's better to just free flow rather than thinking about step-by-step -step intentions. I really love that method. So just journal in as much as you can. If you have half an hour, that's even more better and find out based on what you have journaled what your intentions are and add it um, like ba list wise so intention one intention two and don't be in a pressure or in a hurry to fill up all of these lines that are here you have 12 months 365 days 52 53 weeks uh, there are some things with regards to like, you know, you're going to change your mind regarding a few things. Uh, there are some more based on your based on the experience that, that you have had, you will form more intentions. So allow yourself the space to come back and uh, add any other intentions you may have. 
I think I'm gonna follow the second method. I'm gonna journal in, in another notebook and then I'm gonna uh, sort of derive intentions from that journaling session and then put that over here. Then you have your goal setting pages, goals and dreams, and then steps towards your dreams. Um, I like to have just one goal for each category of my life. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just put one goal in here and then I'll write about like, I'll write a little bit about that goal or that particular dream. Here, for now, um, again, don't be in a hurry because sometimes you cannot figure out what are all the steps that you need to take. You are in a different mindset. You need everything fresh now. You need everything to be perfect at this point in time. Like that's how uh, most of us think at this, you know, at this time wherein we are ending uh, a particular year and then beginning a new one. So even the steps that you create are gonna be slightly, I would say, uh, ideal, ideal. And we want it to be a little bit more realistic. You know, your intentions can be ideal. Your goals and dreams can be ideal. That's totally fine. You have, you have to give your permission, uh, give yourself the permission to think a little bit beyond uh, what's actually possible. But figuring out your milestones or how you're gonna do it, I would suggest like just have about three. You can do it cat, uh, quarter wise. Let's see how many lines do we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can add another one if you want, that's okay. Uh, so probably what I'm gonna do is figure out what my quarterly milestones are. Then at the end of March, I'll come back and I'll add three more um, in here. So that would be good. This way you can either give yourself the entire quarter to work on those three milestones, or if you wanna split it based on month like January, Feb and March, you can do that. But I'd suggest like go step by step. Don't think about all of the steps that you need to take in order to achieve your goal. So this, I'm gonna do that. I wanna think about my overall career, not just my job, um, and really think about what my dream would be. I haven't still decided on my goal. I've, I keep thinking about it, but I need to have a full-blown journaling session to get out all the, uh, all the details that are there in my brain. So, uh, but I really wanna just have one, that I'm 100% sure. I'll talk more about that particular a method and philosophy while I set up these spreads with you guys on camera. Why having one goal is way more impactful than having multiple goals. Then we have the calendar spread here. I'm just gonna leave it and I don't think I wanna do anything with this spread. I mainly use it for uh, mainly use it to refer dates, but you know, you can, um, if you're using it as your work or student planner, you can mark your schedule in here, like what are your days off? If there are any events that are coming up in work, you can do that. I was working in an e-commerce company uh, a few years back and we had a lot of these sales, you know, you have the great Indian festival sale and all that. Uh, those had like those the dates for those sales were decided way in advance uh, so if if i were to be in a very similar situation i would have marked all those dates here just to get an idea because most of the projects that i worked on or the days off uh, you know my schedule and stuff depended a lot on on those sales you can do that um, or if you're using it as an all-in-one planner and you're a mom, you can add your family schedule in here, like your kids' school schedules and all that. That would work great too. Uh, then you have year at a glance. This one, uh, what I'm thinking about doing is because most of the planner spreads are for forward thinking. You know, here you think about your entire year and then your monthly spreads, you think about your month. This one, I want it to be more reflective. Uh, so. I've always failed at this, like coming back and keeping up with these kind of spreads wherein I leave it blank at the beginning of the year and then I have to come back and fill it monthly ones or something. So what I'm thinking is quarterly ones while I come back to uh, set my milestones for my goal, um, I'm thinking I'll come back and fill things that I did regarding my goals, like any progress that I made or how it went, I can do that or I can come back and add any highlights, things that I wanna remember, uh, things that I'm proud of that happened in, during these months. I wanna do that and um, I think three months is a good place wherein it's nice to sit for some time and recall what happened over the last three months and add it in here. Like, 
I, uh, three months, I said three months, right? Yeah. If I'm thinking about half yearly, I'm a hundred percent sure my memory of January would be a lot different than what it actually was. Three months sounds like a sweet spot for me. So I'm just going to do that since I'll already be in this goal setting spread. It's easier to, it's easier for me to come back and write it here. So I'm going to dump that, um, this year then these were the yearly pages then we move on to the monthly pages you have a gratitude practice i like that it's plain and the header is quite minimal so if you don't want to use it for that you can just um white out sometimes what i do is when things are a little bit tough or um i'm a little bit demotivated i like to do this practice of uh listing down like 20 reasons why uh, this job is helpful for me or why this particular freelancing project is helpful for me that like instantly shifts my mindset I love that I'm thinking one I can you know do that like every month that would be a great uh, recurring regular activity it would be really nice instead of waiting for me to feel that way and then come back to this particular activity I think that sounds a lot better uh, but if you're using it as your main planner, it would be nice to add rituals. I did that in my 2022 main planner as to create rituals like morning rituals, day rituals, as well as evening rituals. Those were great. Or if you have any particular project going on, let's say in your work or let's say you're a student and you have an exam coming up. So you can add your exam schedule here or uh, you can create your study plan here. I used to love creating study plans. I didn't have planner when I was in doing my bachelor's or when I was in my school. I used to just have those classmate lined notebooks and I would create study plans. I used to love that. It was worked really great for me. Uh, so you can probably do that here. Again, I'll leave myself the uh, freedom to think about what I need that particular month and create it. But that gratitude practice that I usually do when things go a little bit off track, I think that would be a great idea to do monthly rather than waiting for things to become that way. Uh, then we have the monthly calendar uh, section. I love this. I really love that. It's quite large. It's quite simple, but we've got a few decorative elements. Here, the few things that I add is one paydays. Another thing that I like to add is my meetings. So Thursdays, I will have meetings and Mondays, I might have something else. I like to mark days off, then any project deadlines, basically all of the important day dates that I need to be mindful about, that I need to have at the back of my head. I put it here that way, a huge um, like pressure and tension is lifted off. Uh, from my brain and it's on paper here so anytime I want to refer to any deadlines I need not think about it or go scramble my emails or tons of digital notes that I would have maintained it's just better for me to come back here to see what those dates are and work with it uh, here notes I do use uh, I do use a certain um, notes pages like this notes section in my work planner in my main planner not so much but I like to add a few notes regarding the project deadlines or regarding any meetings in here. So that works quite well. And basically you can do it for your important dates too. Or uh, if you want to write highlight of the day or, you know, any a word of the day or something, you can do that. But I'd suggest don't keep too many things wherein you'll have to go back and fill it every day. Try to like set it up at the, at the beginning of the month and you should be good with it. So I'm going to do that here. And then you have the monthly planning, monthly dashboard page. There are a few changes from last year, especially regarding the habit tracker. I'll talk about that in a minute. But for now, let's talk about the goals. Um, again, I would have loved if it was just like plain boxes section. Uh, that would have been great. But you do have monthly goals. And uh, this again, like try to break down from your make sure whatever you're adding here contributes towards uh, achieving this goal or takes you a step forward to achieving this goal or the milestone, quarterly milestone that you have added. Keep the section for that particular thing itself. That way it will not allow you to detour uh, towards something else when things get a little bit uncomfortable. So keep this for that and do not be under a pressure to fill all of these lines. It's okay if you just have one on your list 
and just focus on that rather than having like five or six and getting a little bit confused if you want to uh, if you want you can have one you can add it here and you can break that down further into different steps too and then you have your to-do list this is where you can write about tasks that are pretty that are pertaining to this particular month so that works great any notes and reminders you know sometimes when you're sitting and planning you do get uh, certain thoughts and i love that they've included this section that way you can just write things down um, there habit tracking what i would use for is uh, first of all the habit tracker was in a calendar format which i loved because i work in content marketing and schedule is really really important for me uh, so having things uh, let's say i was working on a certain project and having that calendar view format really helped a lot but that's okay i will be shifting that as well here um, and i'll be marking that in my monthly calendar this one i don't really know probably i'll write i'll uh, work in certain habits per month that would help me towards my monthly or like yearly goals i can do that but i don't want to be in a pressure to use it um, I want it to make my life easier. If it's complicating my life, I'm gonna leave this blank. It, it doesn't matter. Plan, blank planner pages doesn't really matter to me. It used to, but not anymore. Uh, then we have the project planning page, which I love. I love this edition this year. And it's great that they have included so many. That way you can think about all the multiple projects that you're working on and add um, like what project it is, what are you focusing on for this particular month, and any like reflections about that the date at which you need to get completed we need to complete or any like breakdown of further steps i love it and the reason why i love the number of like projects that they have included here is because uh like i said i want to use this planner more than just my job my main job so that way i can categorize this the top row i can keep it for my job and the bottom i can use it for my freelancing projects or this page i can keep it for my job and this one for my freelancing projects so that would work really great and you have your weekly pages i'm gonna move to a full week because that's a little bit odd uh so here you have monday to friday saturday sunday i like the way it's set up because uh that way i'll finish my work week in here um saturday sunday i don't work unless uh, i'm really close to a deadline and i need to get a few things done saturday sundays i keep that time to uh work on other things that i do in my life like my channel uh, you know planning stuff if i need anything organized my life just overall all of those things so i like that uh, it's divided that way I'll, i can look at the side of the page for my work related appointments and previous year which is 2022 we didn't have these lines that was working really well for me i would have preferred it to be that way uh, but i was thinking because of these checklists i can add a few things that i do on a daily basis things like sorting out my mailbox checking my emails deleting unwanted files i don't do that every day probably i need to do it because uh end of the year i usually sit down to just uh go over my files and folders and it's just a nightmare so it would be nice every day to just organize it little you know probably it would take like five ten minutes and that would be pretty good so i'm gonna write all my daily uh things that i need to get done on here and then i use stickers to mark my meetings any important projects that i'm working on and I break it down i just like to do a little bit of decoration not with decorative stickers but with uh functional stickers itself i like to make it a little <laughs> look a little bit nicer these small things really motivate me in life it brings a lot of joy and you know you might be having a really low work day or a really boring work day using stickers in my planner just just sparks a lot of joy so i love doing that saturday and sundays because i don't work what i do is um it was a lot easier for me to customize this prayer because we didn't have these checklist section i'll just rename this as my weekly intention and this was my weekly reflection so at the beginning of the work week i would write what my weekly intention is uh, is and then at the end of the work week fridays friday evenings i would reflect on that particular intention shut the planner keep it aside don't worry about it until my work week begins i love that routine i want to continue it 
I probably I need to use a larger sticker to cover this up or you know I can just ignore that and do my reflection on this plain side here that would work too so I'm going to continue doing that itself uh, this notes and reminders what I do is I follow the bullet journal system I know this is not a bullet journal it is a planner but I really love the bullet journal system for my work when there are running list of things uh, that I need to get done you know certain projects I cannot finish that in this week but I want to make a note of it that way um, I just write down all the projects every single week I do that it'll it just helps me a lot uh, based on like how I think what's going on in my brain just putting it all on the paper really really helps so I write all of that here and then anything that's completed I cross it off if things that are not completed I move it to next week and that really uh, helps like I'm adding deadlines here for those projects really help me with organizing this so I'll show you all of that I'll do a, a few weekly plan with me's I think in 2022 I just done one uh, weekly plan with me for my work so I will leave that particular video in the description box in case you want to check it out but probably for 2023 I'll do a few more I don't want to do it regularly because it is my work related stuff and um, doing it on video just I'm, I'm scared that I might miss something uh, so probably here and there I will do a few things so I love that but you know you can use if you want to use all the seven days you can use this section to do your weekly reflections i like that we have this option because there is no weekly dashboard also there is no monthly reflection page so if you want uh within this um monthly planning page itself probably instead of notes and reminders you can do a mini reflection here if you want to so these are all of the monthly pages every month or every quarter i'm going to reevaluate and see if i need to change anything that i've spoken about here uh, let's get to the notes pages at the end you have your year in review reflection i'm going to leave it uh, for the end of the year i love the the colors in the spread they look so so pretty i'm really excited at the end of the year to come back and uh, do a little review then you have letter to myself um, honestly i like doing letters but i like doing them in a separate envelope i don't want to have them in my planner uh, because this is just for me I don't want anyone else to see it and because I show uh, this planner on my channel I'm just a little bit worried where I might disclose this and something that I don't want to uh, just doing that allows me to be a hundred percent honest about what I'm writing here so I share a lot you know I'm, com I'm completely comfortable with it I don't do anything on my channel that I'm not willing to so I'm all right with it but letter i want it to be my, for myself so what i'm gonna do is for now i'll leave it blank um but i'm gonna rename this header and do a mini journaling section here uh, probably mid-year check-in or something like that i think that would be great this one uh, when we have two page spreads like this i like it to be connected with each other so once i figure out what i want to do here uh, that's when I'll work on this particular spread. But other than this, we have lots of notes pages. We have six of them, and all of them are like decorated with different birds, which is so cute. Um, I what I use these notes pages for is uh, anything in between, you know, the year. If I feel like I need any particular spread, I come back and I create it here. In twenty. 22 i did in my work planner itself i did a reminder spread so things like take breaks you know take deep breaths and all of that i really loved that spread so something similarly i'll create in my main planner in 21 i created a self-care spread i uh, created a financial section so probably i might i can do something related to my taxes or uh let's see my income through like freelancing i can create that spread uh but for now i'll leave it blank because i have a lot of other planner spreads that i want to create and this um is really not my priority right now so i'll leave uh whenever in between the year i create a spread i will definitely make sure i do a video on it then we have password tracking uh pages it freaks me out to write passwords in uh, a planner I'm not gonna do that last year as well we had these spreads 
what I did was I used it to write down best practices anything you know when I'm working um, there are certain feedbacks that I get or there are things that I observe myself okay this is not working probably it's better to do it this way so I like to add what category that belongs to um, is that reporting is it content creation is it coming developing content strategy like what category is it and then what's the best practice i know there are three columns but i just continue along uh, with these two lines because i don't have any other extra column i just need to know what category it is and what is the best practice so that's gonna work for me we have three of three of these password tracking pages i think these two would be plenty enough for uh, my best practices this one i like to rip off the sticker pages from here so it's gonna look a little bit odd what i'm gonna do is rip off the sticker pages and then use this page and this page paste it and be good with the planner so you have back pocket i store the stickers that i use on a regular basis in my work planner and if i want to store any notepad like this i can do that too and it's gonna be fine I love that they've increased the size of this planner that way uh, the back pocket uh, also becomes larger so love it love this planner i debated a few ways like i was thinking of using this as my main planner but then this has worked out really well for my work and i don't want to disrupt that and also the project planning pages makes it 100 percent suitable for work so i'm going to continue it that way and i hope me sharing uh, how i want to use it gives you guys some ideas you don't need to use these exactly in your work planner you can take it and see how you want to implement it to other areas of your life too that's uh, that works absolutely perfectly so yeah i hope you found this video helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up uh, comment down your thoughts how you if you got this planner like how you are planning to use it i would love to know about it and yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.